Ciao friends and welcome to the whiteboard. In this episode, we will talk about many-to-many -many relationships. The whiteboard is a series about describing, using the whiteboard in a more graphical way, abstract concepts that we already covered in uh, books, videos and courses, but we wanted to have an additional way, an additional point of view to provide you an alternative way to take uh, these concepts and maybe learn them better. So this is not a replacement for other content. Look at that as an additional uh, um, material for uh, your uh, education. And uh, this time we will talk about a uh, wide topic. Many to many relationships uh, can cover many different things. We will include links uh, to more de to, to get more details about this concept because we will focus only on the high level part on how this works from a conceptual point of view. Let's go to the whiteboard. So when we talk about many-to-many -many relationships, actually we could, uh, uh, we could cover many different things. And I will show you that there are two main concepts. The many-to-many -many relationships as, we intend, uh, as they are intended in the data modeling for analytics world, and the many-to-many -many cardinality relationship, which is a specific feature for Power BI that covers a specific scenario, which is not the same that we will see in the first part. So let's start. In this case, we have a situation where we have uh, values uh, for bank accounts and the bank accounts are connected to customers. Every account can have multiple customers. Every customer can have multiple accounts. This means that the value of the sum of the amount of the transactions in the accounts uh, at the customer level is uh, the sum of the individual accounts of each customer. And up, up to this point, the measure is additive. I can see that the sum of the three accounts correspond to the sum for the customer. However, the same account can appear in different, for different customers. For example, Mark and Paul is considered for the total for Paul, but also for the total of Mark which implies that when we look at, the, at a group of customers or we do just the grand total, the grand total sums all the accounts only once and does not produce as a result the sum of the customer because this would provide a wrong number. It would count the same account multiple times. In terms of data modeling, we generate this high-level concept, many-to-many -many relationship as a relationship between customers and accounts. So when we say many to many, we are defining a relationship, a sort of virtual relationship between accounts and customers, where the information about which account is owned by which customer is stored in this accounts customer table. So if we go to the whiteboard, what we are saying is we have two entities. We have the customer and we have the account. And this is the high level uh, description of the relationship. We have a virtual relationship which is many to many. Many to many. However, what we really have in this case is the need of a table, the accounts uh, customer table, which actually stores the existing combinations of customers and accounts. It tells us which accounts are owned by which customer. And if we look at the relationships we have here, we have one many, many one. Because we have a unique row for each customer, a unique row for each account in the customers and accounts tables. And the account customer table can have multiple rows for the same customer and multiple rows for the same account. But these rows represent additional data that actually generates the relationships that we want. So we reference this as a many to many virtual relationship between uh, accounts and customers, even though technically in the data model, it's simply a sequence of one to many, many to one, one to many, many to one relationship that we have seen also in our uh, diagram. And if we look back at the diagram layout, there is only one additional element, which is this uh, bi-directional filter that allow us to filter one customer, and by filtering a customer, we filter all the accounts of that customer. But this is just for uh, producing the right uh, result in the report, 
a behavior that could be obtained by using uh, other techniques in DAX, for example. So in terms of data modeling, we just look at the one, many, many, one sequence of relationship. Now, let's see another case where we have a many-to-many -many relationship between two tables, but it's actually a very different one. And we can see uh, the example in this report. We have a report where we have sales by product, customer, date, and we have a budget, but the budget table has been defined at a different granularity level. What does it mean? If you look at the table product, the table product connects sales, like the, the table customer connects sales, but the, the, there is a relationship between product and budget. It is just that this relationship is not happening for uh, the column that identifies unique products. The budget has been defined by brand. And the brand is a group of products. So we do not have a unique value in the product table to generate the relationship between product and budget as a regular one-to-many -one, one relationship. But as you see, we can, we can connect um, a um, a two tables through a relationship that connects, in this case, a column that is not unique in any of the two tables. And this is a single direction relationship because we want to filter the budget table according to the selection made in product. So if we filter one brand, we want to filter the budget rows for that brand only. And this will work because it will not work the other way around. So by filtering a budget, we don't filter the product. We don't need a bidirectional filter in this case. For this reason, when we look at the cardinality, we see many many because actually we have multiple rows and multi multiple rows in the product table and multiple rows in the budget in the brands in the budget table for the same brand so a single brand can have multiple rows in product multiple rows in budget but now if you think for a moment about what we're really doing we can obtain the very same result by using an alternative data, uh, data modeling technique so instead of using this specific feature of power bi we could have created the model, the very same model with the very same data in the report, this way. Now let's take a look at what we have in this case. We have the budget table and the product table are connected through the brand column. But in this case, we have an intermediate table, brands, which is a table that has a one-to-many relationship with the product table, with a product table, in this case with a bidirectional filter because we want product to filter budget. But brands is also connected to the budget table through a one-to-many relationship. So in this case, uh, when you think about the, the, the relationship we have, we actually have a, a simplified way in Power BI to obtain what we could have obtained by using two relationships and an intermediate table that does not contain any new data from the data source. This is another important element. The list of the brands we put here it's just something we can obtain by getting the unique values in the product brand column and in the budget brand column. So actually we could just analyze the data we already have. We are not adding data in the relationship like we did before. So if we go back to the whiteboard, this is what we created before, a many-to-many -many relationship between customers and accounts with a table in the middle that has the information about the relationship. And when you, when you look at the data, uh, when you look at the sequence of relationship, we read that a many-to-many -many relationship between customer account is a one-many-many-one relationship between customer account. Now, let's do the same for product and budget. We have the table product, and we have the table budget. Now, we said that we created, once again, a many-to-many -many virtual relationship, actually almost a physical one, in a Power BI, we, we can actually create a single line, but what is really happening in this case, we have an intermediate table brands, which has a unique value, a unique row for every brand, which means that the transformation is uh, from a high level conceptual many to many relationship to two physical relationships that we can read as many, one, one, many. And if you remember in the previous example, let's uh, move this this way. In the previous example, what we have seen was uh, something similar, 
But when you look at the relationship is one many many one. When you look at the sequence of relationship moving from customer to account, one many many one. Now we have many one one many and the table we have in the middle, many one one many is a table that we obtain from the existing data. The table we need for the one many many one is a table that actually contains additional information without which the many to many cardinality, the, the many to many high level relationship will not be possible because we need to know which accounts are owned by each customer and this information was not available in the table we already had. So the many to many cardinality relationship, the way we call it, uh, is uh, what solves a specific data modeling problem that could be solved by introducing an additional table obtained by, by, by the data we already have, but of course, if we can already, if we can use the, the, the single line in Power BI that does the job for us, probably it is better as long as we have a small amount of data, a small amount of unique values in the intermediate table. Let's say 100 unique values, 100 unique brands, you will not see any performance difference. But if you have thousands or tens of thousands of rows, in this intermediate table brands, or whatever the name of the table is, but that defines the number of unique values you have in the column that defines the many-to-many -many cardinality relationship, remember, you want to use the explicit relationships, the two relationships and the intermediate table, because it's the only way you can actually materialize the additional indexes for this kind of relationship. Um, the, the, the relationship that you can create in, in the Tabra model as a single many-to-many -many cardinality relationship does not provide the same performance when you have thousands or more unique values in the relationship. So we have seen that the many-to-many -many cardinality relationship is a very specific uh, type of relationship we have in the Tabra model that actually could be obtained by using other techniques. But of course, it's, uh, it's useful when you have a small amount of unique values in the column that define that kind of relationship, which is a type of cardinality relationship and not actually a definition of a relationship as a many-to-many -many between two different business entities. When we have, for example, customer and account, and we need to define a many-to-many -many relationship between two business entities, we probably need an intermediate table with additional data and what we obtain at the end is a sequence of one-to-many and many-to-one relationship that defines a high-level many-to-many relationship between two business entities. Two different things, no shortcut for this kind of uh, uh, high-level relationship between two dimensions because we need additional data from outside and we need regular relationships. But it's good to know that the many-to-many -many relationship uh, can uh, quickly solve a data modeling problem when we have uh, a small cardinality column that has to be uh, used in the way we have seen, for example, for the budget. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the whiteboard and as usual, enjoy DAX. <laughs>